Hello and welcome to me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. Actually using a canvas that I painted on already, as you can see. And I've just uh, chalked out the face that I'm painting. This is... Uh, I'm copying a, uh, a Van Gogh painting. Um, obviously, nowhere near as good as what he did. Um, because it's a copy. And uh, what I'm trying to do, though, is learn. <laughs> learn by copying off the masters um i've been to the museums i've seen van gogh paintings up close and i realize he used a lot of paint <laughs> i mean he used loads and i could say that about a lot of the painters actually uh, monet's painting there was a lot of paint on there sergeants um he didn't skimp and it seemed to be that's the way they do it they use a lot of paint and I think the more paint you use, the stronger your colour is. So I can see why. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using this uh, painting that I did um, in the oil eye uh, time. And uh, I needed a canvas and there it was. So it's getting used again. <laughs> and a lot of the painters did that as well. Um, as... as, uh, as I was in London, they mentioned when they'd x-rayed some of the paintings, uh, there's another painting underneath. <laughs> it's because you you got to use what you've got, what you can afford, and so I'm using pre-painted canvases and just painting over them so I can practice. And uh, what I'm going to do is, like... I'm not sure if you've seen my self-portrait. It was in my previous video. Um, I realised when I was painting that, I really need to learn more about brush strokes. And uh, another painter, other than Van Gogh, that is exceptional with brush strokes, is uh, Munnings. And he's become another one of my favourites. And uh, I've always admired a Munnings uh, painting. Um didn't really know too much about him, um, but I've been studying him a, a bit more now, and uh, there's someone else I need to do more copies of. I've done a, uh, a copy of his uh, his wife on a horse, um, and I learned a lot about brush strokes doing that, actually. And uh, I thought, well, the master of brush strokes, Van Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> That's how you say his name. Um, I mean, he's got to be one of the best at putting putting paint on a canvas <laughs> so good and when you're looking at the paintings that he's done even the early ones I, I'd guess this one's uh, in his earlier period when he did like potato eaters and things like that I think uh, this I mean he's so good at brush strokes I'm awful <laughs> I've got my real trusted ruler, trying to make sure I'm putting things in the right place. But not exact. I'm not doing this exact, to be honest. I'm just trying to learn. And I thought you might find it interesting to see me um, struggling, <laughs> trying to uh, pretend that I can paint like Van Gogh, which I really can't. I've done a few copies of, uh, of Vincent's, and uh, I've enjoyed copying them. And... Uh, and I learn a lot every time uh, about his the way he constructed things. There's something I noticed when I was painting this. He constructs everything um, so well. Uh, and he... It's hard to explain, really. It, it's like almost exaggerated, the, the features, um, in his own way. Because he managed to create his own style of oil painting, um, which is pretty impressive as well. But yeah, so I, <laughs> I was mixing my colours. Um, I didn't use that many colours because I knew this period he used earth tones, so yellow ochres. I, I think I used a uh, Venetian red, which I don't think he would have used, but it was quite close to um, the red on the picture which may or may not be correct because that's a printout of a 
an image that I got. So <laughs> it's all a little bit um, shoddy, really. Um, I don't think the, uh, <laughs> the Van Gogh Museum would let me go in and paint next to one of his paintings, though. Because <laughs> that's the only way. It's the only way you're going to get it perfect, isn't it? Is to get literally in the museum with your paints, set up next to the painting, and then paint it. <laughs> I'd tell you, I'd love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, but I don't think I'd be allowed. Um, actually, 100% sure I wouldn't be allowed because I've tried to do that in a museum before. <laughs> and they've said no. Um, so, yeah. Um, I On um, reflection, I kind of wish I didn't do it on this painting, painting on a painting, because does put you off a little bit when you've got um, all these warm colours behind. I tried to forget about it, but it does affect your, uh, the way you see. So, in a way, I kind of regret it. So I'm trying to be bold with my brush strokes. <laughs> trying. Because I'm pretty sure Vincent would have been... And, and you've got to sort of not become him because you can't become him obviously but try and connect with the way he thought when you paint him and hopefully you get something out of it because that, that's what I try and do anyway try and connect to the his thoughts on painting this painting and uh, I was using uh, De La Rowney oils for this because they're quite thick and I needed quite thick oil. I usually use water mixable oils because of the cleaning. <laughs> and I don't really like using terps, but I've managed to get hold of some uh, uh, non-toxic paint thinner. Paint, um, not paint thinner, brush cleaner. Non-toxic brush cleaner. So I'm using that after I've done the painting. I don't wash my brushes during painting anyway. I usually take them outside and then wash them. Um, that's kind of the setup I've always done because you don't want to be breathing in paint thinner fumes. <laughs> Even if they say non-toxic on them, I still am a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure about that. So I think if I was going to paint this again, I would uh, block colors in. Because I would guess... From what I've seen, I've seen some unfinished Van Gogh paintings and uh, and from what I've seen is he would block areas in and then go in with the uh, thicker paint to create all the form afterwards and he wouldn't have used a ruler. <laughs> so you can see I'm definitely not at that level but you know, I'm enjoying it. And uh, it's it's good fun doing something like this because you can kind of relax. You're not creating your own masterpiece. <laughs> you're uh, you're in the form of copying, so you can relax. The hard work's already been done. Um, really, I mean, the composition is fairly simple anyway. It's just um, probably a study, like I was saying. Um, during his potato eater period, I think he was learning more and more about brush strokes and uh, developing his style. Crazy that uh, Van Gogh didn't paint for that long, really. Not, I think he started in his 30s, 30. Died when he was 38. I, I could be wrong there. Um, but I know he didn't paint for very long. <laughs> the amount of times that I, uh, as I was painting, my colours, I'd lose my colour straight away almost. And I thought to myself, God, Vincent, he must have loaded his brush, must have absolutely loaded it. And I tried loading it and uh, putting the paint on. And... Uh, <laughs> I was getting better results actually. The more paint I was putting on it, it started to work out better. So 
in the future, in my own paintings, I'm going to load the paint on. Like I was saying, Monet, um, Sargent, all the masters, they all loaded their paint on their uh, brush. They really did. I suppose it's a, a beginner thing. You don't want to save your paint. You don't want to use too much. But then you don't get as much of a a statement on the canvas <laughs> you don't get it it just doesn't quite work but then you look at further behind like early days um, when a lot of the painters used very thin oil paint to get their effects so it's <laughs> just the way it goes I guess because they used to do really thin skies and things I've seen them as well. I do like them. I have painted like that before as well. You still have to use a good amount of pigment though. So the quality of your paint has to be good to do very thin layers. I think uh, the cheap paints are no good for anyone, are they? <laughs> they just make things harder. I'm probably going to end up making my own paint because I'm starting to... I'm starting to get an idea of what kind of paint I like painting with. <laughs> uh, so I started putting light in the eyes. And uh, I just couldn't get the eyes to look at me. The eyes were sort of looking wayward and like over there. <laughs> couldn't get them to look at me. So it took me a while to get them to actually finally look out. Yeah. So I was using a lot of uh, yellow ochre... Um, Venetian red, uh, titanium white. I had some cobalt blue out, and then I had some. Uh, I ended up getting some um, magenta. Oh no, not magenta. Permanent rose to put a little bit more pinky redness into the uh, flesh tone, because I noticed in the other picture there was a bit more red. <laughs> so I did do that as well. So unfortunately, there's a bit of glare from the sunshine on the canvas, so it does take the contrast out of the picture a bit, which I didn't think about until I started painting. Because <laughs> I used to have a black curtain up, and I, not a black curtain, a black sheet I used to put up on the window to stop the, any light getting through for this reason, but I forgot about that. <laughs> and I just set the camera up and then just went for it. And there's quite a lot of paint. You can see how much paint I've chucked on there now, actually. Loads of paint. There's a uh, phrase that they used to say when I was learning how to paint the Bob Ross style. They used to say, no paint, no painting. <laughs> <laughs> and I still think about that because, like I said, you paint with hardly any paint and you're not getting a painting. You don't get a painting with no paint. <laughs> a lot of the uh, fear is that the uh, Bob Ross taught and his uh, teachers teach. They're all correct. I know some people say to me, oh, uh, the Bob Ross technique's no good. Um, it is. It's just painting. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, yeah, sometimes I don't have enough paint. I just throw it on the canvas like that. That's actually a technique that I know uh, Master Paint has used. It's, it's a lot quicker than using a palette because <laughs> you put your paint right on the canvas and then you can just dip into it. A lot of the Impressionists did that because of the amount of paint they used. So we're just blocking in now. I started to realise that's probably why you'd have done and I, I wish I did it at the beginning but never mind. Blocking it all in. I'm trying to get like a sort of a bluey purpley look to it because it, it looked a bit like that on the photo. Like I said, I'm not sure if the photo is that correct but <laughs> never mind. Get it as close as we can. As long as we learn from what we're doing, it's all right. 
I really struggled with the eyelids, actually. Ooh. <laughs> I zoomed in. Mm -hmm. oh, I wish it didn't shine back so much. It'd look a lot better if it didn't. Oh, never mind. I'll have to remember that for next time. Because I'm going to do more um, video of myself painting. Because I do this so much. And then uh, I think, oh, I haven't made a lesson for YouTube in a while. I haven't filmed myself or out. Because I'm practicing myself, trying to get better myself. And, uh, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just film myself. And then see what happens. So I need to do that more often. Yeah, I'm just trying to... I'm looking at his brush strokes. I'm really trying to get the feel of them. And I, I think I've started to get that feel at this point. <laughs> right near the end. <laughs> Probably need to do a warm-up painting first. So I can get the feel of it. And then... Uh, and maybe uh, it's a shame I've zoomed in and now I'm doing the clothes so I could have done my zooming out now <laughs> but I forgot well I'm just using a little bit of yellow ochre and white and just throwing it in places where I can sort of see on the picture just to add the highlights I used quite a lot of yellow ochre in this picture, actually. <laughs> Half a tube. <laughs> well, maybe not that much. I'm really using really thick paint now, look. You see, this kind of practice is so important because you realise that you're not using enough paint. And you can only realise that by doing it. You can't... No other way, is there? You've got to, you've got to paint, you've got to just paint more. And that's what I'm doing at the moment, painting as much as I can. Whenever I'm not at work, I'm painting. <laughs> and uh, getting better all the time. Well, I'm telling myself I'm getting better all the time, but um, whether I am or not, <laughs> who knows. It's that like white in the eye. I moved that white and then it started to look at me a bit more. I'm starting to get there. I'm still trying to work on those eyelids. Yeah, I have to make sure I put that black curtain up again. And then I can use the uh, light to light the room up. I knew there was a reason I did that. <laughs> Maybe I could paint somewhere else. Did I have to think about that? So I'm making sure the mouth is better. Because it wasn't quite right. I couldn't get that line on that part of the mouth correct. It sort of goes... Whew. It was such a nice stroke. I couldn't get it. Just shows how good Vincent was with, a, with his brush. I mean, if you want to learn about brush strokes, copy a Van Gogh. <laughs> I mean, I would say this is probably one of the easier ones to copy. I mean, if you look at some of his uh, portraits, um, amazing, just amazing. Some piling on the paint, <laughs> the texture. <laughs> it's a nice ear shot. Oh yeah, there was a nice orangey pink I noticed here and there. And I, I just thought I'd try and get it in with this little thin brush. And I moved them lines as well. They were in the wrong place. I'm trying to get the eye a little bit better. I do really like using a lot of paint now. Uh, using really thick oils. I think that's the way for me to go. Uh, with my painting it's a way for me to uh, really follow in the footsteps of the masters really <laughs> that's what they were doing thick paint, I mean I've said it a few times now but when you go in the museums and see how much paint is on the canvases you realise so there it is on 
front view um, you can see how, how the paint is and there's a photo I took <laughs> looks quite dramatic actually I'm quite happy with it though um, I've learned a lot I need to do some more so thanks very much for watching this one and I'll see you at another one cheers bye